Hello, Atlas founders, investors, and friends of the Atlas. Today, I want to share with you my excitement about the ESG space and how that led me to meet with Robert Downey Jr., the Iron Man, this year. So, to put things in perspective, let's get me started with some numbers. From 29 to 2019, the ESG sector, everything around sustainability, climate tech, have raised $10.3 trillion, meaning all this money from pension funds, institutional government bonds, etc., going to ESG and climate, that's the amount, right? $10.3 trillion. However, from 2019 to 2021, $51 trillion have been invested into that space. That's, that's a crazy amount of money. That's a lot of moolah, right? There's a, there's a huge wave of funding uh, into ESG, climate, sustainability, projects, development funds, venture capital, anything around sustainability is super, super hot right now. So you got to be part of it, right? It's not, it's not just about, you know, hugging trees. It's not that anymore. You know, this is this is real stuff now. This is real deep tech. Tesla, the biggest company, electric car company in the world, is an EV company, but it's also a sustainability tech company, and they are grabbing part of this fifty million, fifty-one trillion dollar. So anybody right now starting a company in climate tech, helping energy transition, helping the world becoming greener, will benefit to that wave. So if you're a person, uh, you know, attracted with money, your ears should pop up right now, right? You get tax benefits, you get to walk about stuff that is really mind blowing and your participation, you know, your peace in this world, uh, your legacy have a chance to be built upon that. Moreover, if you look at the big guys, the BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink have said last year, the next thousand unicorns will be ESG tech, sustainability tech companies. So again, that's a tsunami that is coming. And as we say, where a wave comes, all sheep get to rise, right? Now, the killer number I've learned last year, and that's a very important one, uh, which made me understand why everybody's starting something in that space now and why Robert Downey Jr. started a fund is that out of this $35 trillion, uh, only 25, uh, sorry, 25 trillion haven't been deployed yet. So, so that's mean all this money is staying in the air, what we call dry powder in, in the venture capital term. Like dry powder is all this money that is on funds in, you know, bonds up there, but not into the entrepreneurs yet. So the next 10 years, we will see a lot of this money flooding back into the entrepreneurship, uh, into series A, series B company, into the IPO market. So this is where we are coming in with Atlas. We want to gather up entrepreneurs, sustainability tech founders, that are active building the next big thing in climate tech, in sustainability tech, in ESG, reinventing our societies and cities of tomorrow. And that is what led me to meet with Robert Downey Jr. earlier this year. Um, and that was a really exciting moment for me, you know, meeting Aaron Mam in person around that theme of sustainability. Uh, building tech, not just to make money, but to do good. Uh, it's something that's really meaningful for him. And uh, here is here is the recording of, of our conversation. Here you go. My dumb little spiel is, you know, if you're here and, and welcome, and what we want to do as the weeks go by is, is get to know some of you. Johnny got to catch up with somebody after last week's and called me literally just, just floating on the connection he made with this uh who tell us a little bit about this fella from last week 
Uh, well, his name's Joanne. Uh, he's actually on the line, Robert. I mean, if we really want to do it, we could. I, I think he's on the line. I'm not sure. Jeanette is uh, the eye in the sky running this in the background. So, Jeanette, oh. if you're Joanne, it's spelled D J O A. Uh, uh, you could let him in uh, uh, to talk to us. That would be great. Oh, my gosh. There he is, Robert. Joanne is now speaking with us. Hey! Hi, everyone. Good, uh, good, good morning or good evening. I don't know. It's 2 a.m. here, so I woke up just to uh, take this call. Very excited to speak with you, Robert. Nice to meet you. Really a pleasure. Well, I want to thank you because, you know, part of the reason we wanted to do this the way we're doing it with the kind of folks we're doing it with is we want that ease of communication and synergy and dialogue and, um, and, what brings you back, let alone at 2 a.m.? Or, Jonathan, do you want to kind of lead him in a little bit to why we were so uh, inspired? Well, I mean, I could tell you what I found inspiring in Joanne. I don't, he's not one that's a lo- at a loss for words. But uh, here you have a young entrepreneur with 500 startups who started a business uh, employing technical talent uh, across Asia. I think the statistic I read is they're up to 5 million people in, you know, wow. connecting uh, people. He's an Alibaba, 500 startups uh, founder. He's a young black founder in technology, which is uh, not so common, which I think is fantastic. Uh, you know, Forbes 30 under 30. I was just electrified. And, and I mean, Joanne, tell us just briefly, because we've got to get to the main event here. Tell us briefly what you're setting up in terms of a society to mobilize young people around these issues? Sure. So, yeah, I think I'm part of the second generation of the internet bubble, right? We walk, Uber, etc. And um, me and a lot of my fellows, we, we've we been trying to make money online and be like Mark Zuckerberg, successfully or not. Um, but um, a lot of us, you know, now we, get, we start to realize how important the climate is. Um, and we start to see a lot of climate events and we, things just going to go on and go on. So, a lot of tech entrepreneurs now think they should do something for climate change and using deep tech particularly to do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what inspired me and to, to create um, a society called Atlas Society. And so uh, we, we're just starting, but um, it's based on the book I wrote after interviewing 900 uh, climate experts, entrepreneurs and, and policy makers. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, it's going to be um, an entrepreneur of, uh, a community of young entrepreneurs uh, and mentees, mentees, mentors, to help each other uh, globally to, to achieve that goal. Yeah. I mean, would that electrify you, Robert? You tell me. I mean... Would... No, no. It, it, it's great. And also, uh, Joanne, don't be surprised when I call you and ask if you'll be on this podcast series we're starting. Um, so I, I just want to say before the genuine professionals take over and give you a real lay of the land and, and get, get down into the uh, microfibers of what we're up to, that um, when folks like Joanne stick around or, or come back or say that they have more than a passing interest in what we do, it's really validating. I'm sure all of you know in this space, you know, it's um, there's, there's so many ways to do it and there's so many ways to do it wrong. And, and what I really appreciate is that Steve and Johnny and I went on a, a listening tour on the East Coast and really spent a lot of time in the and a contemplation and we wound up 